Welcome to Public Art Ask Me Anything panel. My name is Jacqueline Mack and I'm the creative director and strategist of Mississauga Arts Council. This webinar is part of our TD Culture Lab Professional Development webinar series presented by Mississauga Arts Council and sponsored by TD Bank Group. The Mississauga Arts Council is dedicated to enabling the growth of the arts by creating opportunity and connection between artists and residents in Mississauga and beyond. Now in our 42nd year, the Mississauga Art Council is a registered charity dedicated to our vision of Mississauga as a vibrant cultural community where arts and culture thrive. The Mississauga Arts Council acknowledges that the land on which we gather is part of the treaty and traditional territory of the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation, the Haudenosaunee Confederacy, the Huron-Wendat, and Wyandotte Nations. We are grateful to have the opportunity to work on this land and give our respect to those peoples and their ancestors who have been inhabitants and caretakers of this land since time immemorial. We also recognize that Mississauga is now home to many global indigenous peoples. It is my pleasure to introduce three amazing, intelligent, smart, beautiful, and talented women. We have Kyla Rodeja, Public Arts and Partners Manager at Artscape. Philippa French, who is the public arts curator for the city of Mississauga, and Soon Cho, founder of Beautiful Art and Pieces, Artist and Entrepreneur. So I'm going to pass this on to Kyla and she can get started. Thank you. Thanks so much for that lovely introduction. <laughs> um, hi, everyone. Thank you so much for, for uh, coming out today. And thanks, uh, Jacqueline and Mississauga Arts Council for um, having us um here basically for this this awesome chat um so i'm actually going to share my screen real quick all right that should be a little slideshow um okay so yeah, i'm going to chat through a little bit about artsy Capelli um and what we do to see if it's uh yeah, exciting and helpful for anybody and happy to take uh questions at the end uh, during the q a as well um, so Artscape, if you haven't heard of Artscape before, we've been around for over 30 years. Um, we're a nonprofit organization. Uh, we have many buildings around Toronto. You've probably been or seen at least one of them. Um, there's about 14 now, and there's community hubs, um, affordable housing, affordable studio spaces, all for artists in the city. Um, and Artscape Atelier, we're one of the um, departments, basically, of Artscape. Um, and we were founded in 2019 um, and really came about during the pandemic in 2020. We, we really launched and uh, it was an, a really interesting time to launch and it was very much needed. Um, and we really worked mostly in the public realm. Um, and so basically we're a social enterprise and we're dedicated to creating meaningful opportunities for artists to participate in city building using creative placemaking place practices. And I can show you some examples of of what those are. Um, these are just some of our 14 buildings. Um, again, you've probably been or seen one of them. Um, so for RC Pichelli, um, so we're working with the developers, um, organizations, uh, building owners, and, and the city. And basically, if they have any sort of spaces, outdoors, indoors, that they want to reshape and reimagine, uh, we can do that through art and working with artists. Uh, resulting in a lot of uh, exciting opportunities and a lot of different scales for, for artists. Um, so such as visual art, uh, you've got your sculpture, your murals, uh, your functional art, such as bicycle racks or benches, maybe some things that people don't think about with public art. Um, animation, um, such as experiential um, performance art and gallery spaces. Um, so since 2019, we've commissioned over 80 artists um, to basically create public art projects across the city and um, generating a variety of economic opportunities and many of them have mentorship uh, opportunities as part of the project, which is something we're really passionate about. Um, it can be very difficult for emerging artists to get into public art in the first place, um, especially if they don't have pre-existing um, examples in their portfolios and skills in their portfolios to show and projects. So yeah, there's just a, a huge uh, stepping stone for a lot of emerging artists to, to try and get into the public art realm. So something we try to do in, in all of our large scale uh, projects. I won't dive too deep into the exact process, but I can do that if anyone has 
um, questions. So I'm actually going to skip there. I think it's more important to show you some examples. Um, so Lakeview Village, uh, if you've not been there yet, it's in Mississauga. It's Lakeshore Road East and Hydro Road. Highly um, encourage everyone to go there. It's just such a great example of a public art program in a large scale development site. So basically this is a mega large scale development site at the moment um, and it's still in progress. There's a lot of building work going on. Um, it was a site of two OPG coal plants. Um, so it was not accessible to the public for many, many years. Um, and now it's, it's gonna be a community um, with a lot of residential units. And so it's opening uh, the waterfront for the first time in that area um, to uh, a lot of you know, public and, and opening to the public, the, the space itself. So it's really important to introduce the space again to um, the community and to have the community part of the space. Um, and then again, it was during COVID, so it, in, in the lockdowns. Um, so a great first step into this was the building hoarding. Um, so the hoarding itself was such a great opportunity for artists who didn't have any opportunities in, in galleries um, and spaces, which were all closing down at the time during lockdowns. Um, and so this offered an outdoor gallery space. Um, and a lot of local artists, um, 17 different local artists got the opportunity to work here um, and to paint on the, the hoarding directly and to be part of the community in a safe outdoor environment. Um, and then the community itself got to get reintroduced to this uh, location. Um, there was a bike path and a pedestrian uh, walkway all around the hoarding. And so it really became this outdoor gallery space for a safe um, way to enjoy art at a time when it was m most needed. Um, and now for Lakeview, so you'll see one building when you go there, um, which I definitely uh, think you should. And this building is a cell center. Um, it's also a discovery center and a community hub. Um, and this is one of many pieces um, in and around the, the, the building that's there at the moment. Um, in composition for wind, it's a kinetic sculpture and moves uh, with the wind. It's really mesmerizing to see in person and definitely um, want to encourage you all to do that. Um, and the artists were Studio F Minus, and this was something that had a great mentorship component. I won't speak to it too much because Sun Cho um, is probably going to touch on it later. She was one of the amazing mentees, um, as well as Alex and Agnostu. Um, and something that people might not think of um, when they think of public art, um, benches and functional art, it's definitely an area that is lacking, um, but something that is definitely possible. Um, and not to get too budgety, but it comes from a different budget um, of developers. It comes from their landscaping budget. So it's really good to kind of know from an organizer's point of view, like where opportunities could lie um, and where we can maybe pull from, from, from budgets as well. Um, so yeah, something that is possible um, and has been more and more seen around, around the city and the country um, as, as we start to allocate funds from, from those budgets. Um, so this was a really great example. Um, this is ZB. Um, so it's in the Ottawa Gatineau area. Um, and so the artist was local to the site and really knew and could really contextualize the site because um, we weren't obviously there at the time. We're in Toronto based. Um, so the artists who led this understood the community, understood the site, and the um, utilized the rocks that were all around the waterfront, um, which connects the two sides of the community. Um, so it was able to really work with that and be really inspired by the, the waterfront, which was a big part of the community there. Um, touching on other areas that people might not think of um, in development cycles. Um, so these are welcome gifts, and these are gifts that uh, Daniels Corporation and maybe some other developers, um, they, they give items to residents when they first move into new development sites. Um, and so instead of just a regular bottle of wine or whatever it may have been in the past, um, there's a real opportunity to, to pull from these marketing budgets, again, kind of speaking through budgets, but it's another budget to really think through um, because they have this budget. And so why not utilize it for artists and have these amazing, maybe smaller scale um, touch points and projects um, where artists can create at many different scales and the uh, development cycle. 
and again launch events uh, part of marketing um, initiatives as well uh, through a lot of uh, a lot of developers and so they have a lot of these events throughout the, the whole cycle with agents um, and community members and so all these events really could have activations and have more artists involved um, to create this really energized space and more uh, community engagement throughout for sure. And I do want to touch, sorry, soon I have a photo of you here too, um, but really wanted to touch on mentorship a little bit further. Um, uh, just the questions that we that we would always get is how do I get involved and how do I get involved if I've never had like a, a large scale public art project before, or maybe just some murals or maybe not even anything like how do I get involved in public art and a huge way to do that is through mentorship um, projects. There's a lot of projects now where we see more and more mentorship being added onto the project and being part of the project. Um, and that's for many reasons. One is to you know, foster knowledge sharing, but also to make sure there's local artists as part of, because they're part of the community, to be actually part of the projects in these communities, which is very, very important um, and really can ground a project in the community and with a lot more understanding than maybe previously seen. So it's it's really um, important work and uh, it'll be interesting to hear from Sun's point of view, who is a mentee. Um, but yeah, we've seen really great results and we've seen artists who maybe didn't have lots of experience in the past um, in public art and actually gain this experience and, and be success, successful in future um, public art uh, projects and submissions. So yeah, definitely excited about more mentorship opportunities and i'll just leave you with this image because it's just lovely um but it's the light within by ryan longo um and it's at lake view village and again if, if you can get there it's it's just such a, a great example of many different uh, public art uh, projects in and around the building and yeah if you have any questions let me know thank you so much kyla <clears throat> that is welcome great. I think this is the perfect opportunity for everyone to gather their thoughts and questions and you can leave them in the chat. We will move on to Philippa French and just to be mindful of the time is 7.20 right now. So we'll have Pip present. Oops, sorry, just trying to figure out how to unmute. Um, all right, everyone. Uh, thank you, Kyla, for that great presentation. Um, as Jacqueline mentioned, my name is Philippa. I also go by Pip, so you can call me either, that's fine. Uh, and I am one of two public art curators with the city of Mississauga. Um, and we're located within um, the culture division, which is kind of our larger department um, at the city. And, and our offices are at the Living Arts Center uh, in downtown Mississauga. Um, so I'm gonna talk a bit more generally about public art within the city. Um, from kind of the city context, public art really is uh, visual art by professional artists. It's located in the public realm um, and it's free for all residents and visitors to enjoy. Um, the city acquires public art through a formal selection process. And we have three main kind of categories of public art in the city. Um, we have permanent art, uh, which you can see on the left. We have temporary art in the middle and then digital public art as well. And all of these projects can include, but are, are not limited to murals, installations, sculptures, uh, sound art, light-based art, projections, um, construction hoarding, like we just saw, uh, really a whole range. Um, the possibilities are, are endless. Um, and the works themselves, they can be um, standalone site-specific work. So they can be integrated into design elements in the public realm, like benches, um, architecture, like in the side of a building um, or in park um, kind of landscape designs as well. Um, so the city has over uh, 70 city owned public art projects um, installed and that includes 25 permanent projects. And um, we also have 13 temporary projects that are currently on display. Um, and really uh, a temporary project can be installed from anywhere, you know, from one day to a week to a month to up to uh, 10 years um, in terms of time and life. Um, whereas the permanent project is uh, something that's added into, into our collection that we look after um, kind of forever. So that's kind of the difference between those the two types of projects. 
Um, and we commission uh, artists and artworks in a variety of different ways. So we have open calls for artists. We also do um, invitational calls and then direct commissions. So really depending on the project timeline, um, the budgets and the needs of the projects it will determine kind of what uh, method that we go with. In terms of open calls, we have an average of kind of five to eight open calls released each year. Um, and these are all posted on our website. I have the link below. Um, I can add it to the chat afterwards as well. Uh, we also use uh, Akimbo as a way to kind of distribute our opportunities um, across the country. Um, there's also a culture uh, newsletter that I would encourage you um, to sign up for. And then if you're not following Saga Culture on Instagram um, or other social media platforms, definitely follow along. We post um, pretty much all of our calls for artists and projects on there as well. Um, so next I'm going to chat to you briefly about how you can start to think about transforming um, your own artistic practice into the realm of public art, if that's something that you haven't necessarily explored before, um, and what I think some of the kind of key things are to consider when you're putting together applications to public art opportunities. So firstly, um, you know, installing something on a sidewalk is different than um, having something in a gallery setting. So really consider how um, that kind of impacts the way you approach your work and how your work can start a dialogue in public space. And leading on from that, um, I also like to consider um, and think about kind of safety and appropriateness for public public setting. So, you know, what's a good, what is a good fit for um, a contemporary gallery setting where there's, you know, a gallery attendant, there's often signs around saying not to touch the artwork, you know, that's not going to be the case at all for public, uh, for public art. People will be um, touching your piece, they'll be sitting on it, climbing it, you know, sometimes, unfortunately, like drawing all over it. Um, so that's something else that's uh, really important to, to consider when you're um, brainstorming ideas and bringing your project to life. Um, it's also important to think about how your project is relevant to the city and to its residents. Um, we have some really great documents um, online, which I can also link in the chat, um, like our public art plan and the culture plan. Um, and those documents, you know, they're quite hefty, but they do contain some really great information about, um, you know, guiding themes for art in the city and, you know, priorities of the different departments. And that can be a really great place to start looking when you're thinking about your artwork theme, your concept, your brainstorming ideas. Why not take a look at, at those resources that already exist um, to help, you know, create pieces that are um, relevant to the site. Um, Another thing uh, I think is a great option if you're wanting to branch out into installation and sculptures and things like that, but you don't think that you have um, enough experience, you can definitely consider applying as an artist team. Um, for all of our calls, we always accept artist teams, um, you know, pairing up with someone who brings a different set of skills um, and then together applying, um, applying together. Um, and then sometimes we see artists even collaborate with a fabricator in their proposal. Um, so, you know, really bringing that technical expertise that you might not necessarily have. Um, so, you know, pairing up with um, a 3D printing company um, and then together you're submitting an application. We also see that, things like that. Um, and then as Kyla mentioned, I, I, uh, I love the idea of utilizing different mentorship opportunities. They're a great way to get experience um, from, from artists who are already working in the field. And, you know, that's kind of how you can really learn about things that um, really only come with experience, like figuring out how to uh, work with, you know, those big budgets, um, figuring out insurance, um, learning about, um, I don't know, concrete footings and foundations, all things like that, that you really, uh, you don't get experience with unless you're kind of on the ground working on the project. Um, Another way that I think is a great way to get involved and learn more about public art is to participate in um, an art selection committee. Um, so, you know, participating in something like this can really help you get an understanding of the selection process um, to get kind of a behind the scenes look at what goes into the decision making process. Um, so at the city, we have um, a biannual call for um, art selection committee members. So we just had one last year. So 2024 will be the next one. Um, so keep an eye out for that if you're interested. Um, and then, you know, public art projects, they're not all kind of sculptures and installations. There's lots of smaller scale projects that I'm going to go through now um, that you can definitely start to think about, which are a really great way to transition your work from kind of two-dimensional um, artistic practice into um, public art and into more 
a 3D kind of setting. And just to get that experience, um, you know, starting small and working your way up. Um, so banners are a great way uh, that you can do that. Um, the city, we have an annual banner program. I think we just ended that um, call for artists the other week. Um, so keep an eye, it's usually at the beginning of the year, every year, so keep an eye out for that. And then, um, you know, business improvement areas across Mississauga and across um, pretty much, you know, most major cities in Ontario, um, they generally all have banners and they, they love having artists involved. So keep an eye out for, um, you know, other BIA um, calls for artists and things like that. And generally they, they get changed up every year. So I feel like uh, I've noticed at least that, you know, banners are, are a great way to get your, your artwork up into the public realm. Um, another option um, is thinking about murals. Um, at the city, we uh, we do murals on publicly owned building like this um, works yard building um, on uh, Mavis Road. Um, we also do ground murals um, in public squares and along the, the roadway as well. Um, and I know groups like Mac um, and others do uh, really great murals all across the city on um, uh, privately owned buildings as well. So definitely keep an eye out for that. And one thing um, that I find is a really great way to get involved and, and started in murals is um, if you know that an artist is doing um, a larger project, uh, you know, reach out to them and find out if they need an assistant, um, if they need help like priming the wall. Uh, most uh, larger projects, they do, um, the artists do need assistance. So this um, Moonlight Murals Collective project on the right here, I think there were three or four assistants that were hired for that project. So that's a really great way to, you know, um, get some hands-on experience without necessarily taking on the full kind of risk of the project. Um, and then another uh, type of project that we're, we're doing uh, more and more frequently um, across the city are digital illust illustrations. So these are printed on vinyl or aluminum, things like that. Um, so this is really a way to take your practice from your computer uh, into the public realm and um, you know you can get really high quality um, really vibrant projects from that um, and yeah it, it's just it's I would just say it's it's very cool to be working something you know on your iPad or on your computer and seeing it so small and then all of a sudden it's printed and it's like 10 feet high and you're looking at it from you know outside the fire station like this project um, it, it's a really great way to kind of move your experience um, and your practice into the public realm as well. Um, and really, you know, the possibilities are endless. It doesn't stop there. Um, this is a, an example of a project that we did at Arendelle Park where an artist, Chantelle Rousseau, she had put um, uh, these, she had done watercolors of different um, animals that are uh, found in the Credit River. Um, and then she had printed them onto these vinyl flags and hung them all around uh, the park. Um, there's utility boxes, you know, all across the city that can be wrapped in vinyl or painted on. I know Mac has a great um, boxes uh, program as well um, that you can get involved in. Um, and then, you know, it doesn't stop there. Uh, you can use kind of any public public form can be a canvas. Um, so whether it's uh, a light post or a traffic signal um, post, you know, it can be uh, a canvas for public art. So this is an example of a project that um, was in collaboration with the um, Poet Laureate uh, in Mississauga. And all along the Burnham Thorpe Road bicycle lane, um, there were all these um, homes put up on different um, signposts um, where that, um, the poet laureate had created the poem um, for the site and then an artist had designed the plaque that it was printed on and then the city installed it as well. And that's it, short and sweet. Um, if, uh, yeah, if anyone has any questions, here's my contact information. Definitely uh, follow Saga Culture. Um, and this is our calls for submissions page where everything, uh, all of our calls are posted. Um, so keep an eye out for that. Yay! Thank you so much, Walipa. That was very insightful, very informative. Um, just to let everyone know, don't worry, this is recorded, so um, you will find these <laughs> slides come to um, and on on YouTube. So, last but not least, we will have soon. All right. So I don't know how much time we have, but <laughs> we we have um, enough time. Great. <laughs> uh, okay.
So hi everyone, my name is Soon. I'm an artist um, based in Canada. Uh, I'm kind of everywhere, so I wouldn't say <laughs> only one city. Um, however, so I'm currently um, working mainly in public art sector and I'm really honored to be here um, to share my journey as an independent artist. Um, thank you so much, uh, Jacqueline, Kyla, and Philippa for the lovely presentation, the intro. Um, it, it just reminded me that there's endless possibilities um, in the public art sector, and I'm very thrilled uh, of this uh, growing uh, sector in this community. Um, okay, so I my main goal is to give you my own artist perspective um, and share my like stories and journey and behind the scenes. So I'll share with you. Um, a little bit of uh, images, uh, slides of my previous works till what I have been doing today. So let me share my slide and feel free to um, ask questions in the chat during um, like my slide presentations. If you have any questions um, or even like stop me um, to if you have like a quick question. Okay, let me just so. That's my name, Soon Cho. Um, so a little bit about my, uh, I guess, background. So, oops. So 1984, when I was born, 2003. Uh, so I just love to doodle. <laughs> so I made a lot of artworks. And I had a um, background in illustration. I studied illustration at Sheridan. And I transferred to uh, Rhode Island School of Design and Textiles. Um, and upon graduating, I kind of uh, fell in love with lighting, uh, installation, and larger scale um, artwork. So I've been doing trade shows and exhibitions um, for around five to six years. Um, so this was uh, some of my first uh, lighting designs made out of um, everyday materials like plastic gimp and straws. Uh, I participated in different like shows. I, I just applied to a bunch of different shows. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I just made a lot of lamps. <laughs> um, this was um, out of tinfoil. I used tinfoil and fabrics. Um, and I upcycled um, kind of like a traditional lamp that I found in the secondhand stores. And it was just... Uh, a little installation experiment. I just love large scale stuff. Uh, and that also led me to doing an event installation for like a makeup event. Um, and also I flew to UK and participated in this 100% design trade show. Um, it was for more like inter interior and architectural um, designs. Um, and also uh, some in Toronto. Um, this was my last show before I basically ended my lighting journey. Um, I had a bunch of other shows um, other than these um, because um, I just loved uh, trying different ideas. Um, but this is it for now for the images. And um, I got burned out <laughs> of making lightings and um, just going fl flying everywhere to do installation, which was really fun, but it, uh, it was very costly and I had to make my ends meet. So I pretty much uh, stopped for a minute um, and I wanted to think. <laughs> so, from 2015, I actually flew to Spain to do a master's degree in like entrepreneurship and business. Um, however, when I went there, I took all my art supplies and it uh, I almost like was a full-time illustrator there. <laughs> um, so it's Kylene asked, did you have to learn to be an electrician, wiring, et cetera? Um, I think she means when I was making lamps. No, I just started from scratch. I researched, I read books to do all the, uh, you know, technical stuff. I just did problem solving as I was making. So yeah, 
Um, so I'll show you like how it all started, my journey as an illustrator, independent artist, and now working in public art. So it just started from a ske sketchbook, right? Like every artist does. So I, I just love to doodle like different flowers um, during my studies in business. <laughs> um, and it led me to participating in this uh, beautiful um, art market in Barcelona. And uh, my doodles turned into like mirrors. Um, this was hand painted wood with acrylic and gouache. Um, and it's all handmade. And I made a lot of jewelries and made paintings and just uh, made a lot of things. Um, and that um, led me to also, uh, it didn't all stop me from me being interested in large scale art. So one day uh, I told my friend in Spain, I really wanna do more murals or just draw on like a huge big wall. And uh, she's like, okay, you can draw in my place. Um, so I just drew um, just little doodles in her place and she liked it. Uh, I was also uh, drawing in my place. <laughs> I, I was renting at the time. So I just took a bunch of like different sheet of papers, um, taped it and just drew on top of it. Um, it felt really nice. <laughs> Um, and luckily, um, I was telling everyone that I wanted to do murals and my friend just uh, asked this uh, owner of a restaurant that he goes to every day um, that he knows an artist and that led me to doing this huge mur mural. And uh, this was painted uh, by hand, um, it, like just with marker actually. Um, and this was my first ever mural. This was uh, actually a permanent one. And it was 30 by six feet, which is huge for the first one. Um, I pretty much <laughs> got up on this like a large, uh, what do you call this? Um, yeah, like ladder. And um, yeah, this is Rio de Janeiro <laughs> uh, because it was a Brazilian restaurant. Um, I wasn't scared of this because I was so happy drawing on this huge wall. Um, I had to like kind of get down and then move this uh, like ladder to do the next one bit by bit. Uh, took me around probably like around a week or so. Um, and after I got back from Spain, actually this, this was like my last uh, like drawing in public um, in Spain. Um, the store, the store just approached me um, because she saw my art in that market, art market that I participated in Spain. And she approached me um, to do this like window uh, drawing um, in Spain. And this was my last one. And when I get back from Spain, I researched, um, different opportunities and um, I applied to this uh, this one um, called uh, Todo. Um, okay, what, what's the full name? Um, hold on one second. Actually, I'll tell you later. Yeah, TO Design, yes. <laughs> um, and they, they hired, um, they commissioned, I mean, it wasn't like, fully commissioned. Um, they just um, let artists uh, draw in different spaces so that you could uh, expose yourself and also um, the public to interact with your art. And I drew in this uh, huge um, window. Uh, it was an office space in this graphic design studio called Entro. And uh, it, this was really fun. So yeah. This was another opportunity that I applied. Yes, Design Toronto, former Toto. Yes, that's correct. <laughs> um, and this was a huge project because it was there was a lot of space, um, but super fun. Um, yeah, and okay, and didn't stop me if I didn't find opportunities. I. <laughs> I uh, did a collage mirror at my parents' place, um, bought this huge canvas, drew uh, 
huge flowers um, in acrylic, cut them out and installed it <laughs> in their huge wall because they needed something there. Um, I also explored a uh, different um, illustration journey. Uh, I, I wanted to make picture book. So I um, self-published the picture book um, in 2020 when the pandemic hit. Uh, I didn't know that the pandemic will hit, but this was kind of in between um, my contracts being ended from my full-time job and trying to find another, uh, the next step. So I decided to draw uh, for the picture book. This is my niece, by the way, um, called Finding Nina, like seek and find. Um, and uh, this was my first public art project working with the city, um, with city of Mississauga. Um, this was an artwork for um, the Hazel McCallan Central Library uh, in Mississauga. And um, this was a starting point for me um, in uh, really delving into the public art sector. Um, and I got really lucky because um, when I was working at Visual Arts Mississauga, um, my colleague at the time actually referred me to uh, Philippa here. Um, when she was looking for an artist for this project. Um, this is, um, yeah, and this was very special to me because it was for the library that I always uh, went to uh, growing up in Mississauga. Um, yeah, and this is a, a bigger picture. And this was really cool to see. Um, yeah, this was a full cycle moment. Um, this was really cool to see because, um, yeah, it was just huge and it was really cool to see um, my like digital art really um, just, yeah, being alive. Um, and another opportunity that I um, got, I was lucky to find was um, this mentorship program from Artscape that Kyla mentioned in her presentation. So how I found this opportunity, it was um, not an accident because <laughs> um, around that time I was out of job and I was still really looking for more public art, large scale uh, installation opportunity. Uh, I had no knowledge um, at the time, um, no technical knowledge nor experience. Uh, I just had desire. Um, so I was just emailing, contacting, just applying to different things, uh, which had opportunities and which didn't have opportunities yet. Just everyone, every possibilities I can get. Um, but uh, just no answer, no reply. However, I was driving past Lakeview Village one day and um, I thought they needed something because it was such a cool space. And so I went on their website and just emailed them. Um, and uh, luckily, Kyla here uh, emailed me back, mentioning um, if I was interested in this project, I mean, it's in this program. Um, and I was thrilled because it was a perfect opportunity for me because I really wanted to learn. Um, like I wanted to have a hands-on experience um, from the experienced uh, artist who has been working on this like large scale uh, projects. So um, yeah, basically we had meetings just like work. We had meetings every week um, uh, talking about all the issues, problems. It's all problem solving. Um, and the next steps that um, um, what next steps of the huge project. Um, there's a lot of steps, a lot of people involved. So um, there's many problem solvings to do. And um, I mean, we were just, uh, me and Alex uh, who were the mentees, we're very lucky to work with them. Um, and we pretty much like help with research, finding some manufacturers, um, like doing color palettes like this. Um, yeah, this was what I helped out with. 
uh, along with like finding um, like motor manufacturer um, that they needed. So you really get to see um, hands-on. And yeah, this was like an amazing opportunity that opened doors um, for me. So highly recommend. And also we visited Studio F minus Studio. Uh, it was just really cool to see uh, all the inventions uh, that they're working on. And uh, yeah, we just discussed like colors there too. Um, and I, after pretty much like doing one public art project with City of Mississauga, um, I submitted uh, different uh, proposals to every opportunity. Um, and this was another one that I did uh, for my Lakeview Village. And this was like um, digital mural that was moving. Um, you could find the moving one in the My Like View Village website or on YouTube if you search for my name. Um, so uh, I don't know how to animate. Um, I'm not an animator, I'm an illustrator. So I just wanted to give you like, like a, some tip like for this to work. Um, I just collaborated with an animator. I found uh, an animator on Upwork and, uh, you know, made a really nice uh, digital mural and really, uh, it was really fun. So um, when I visited Discovery Center in Mississauga, um, I was very honored to find two, two of the projects I was involved with, uh, one, uh, the digital mural that I worked on and um, the cloud, um, I think it was called uh, something with the wind, um, <laughs> the former name, um, the kinetic sculpture. Um, yeah, composition for wind uh, with Studio F minus. Uh, it was really cool to see. Um, and uh, this was another project that I uh, had an opportunity to um, work with, uh, with, uh, Brookfield Place, um, Brookfield Properties, uh, that was the client, um, and Brookfield Place was the, the location, and how I got this opportunity was, um, like, through a referral as well, like, um, Studio F minus, uh, referred me to one of their clients because they were looking for, uh, an artwork for a specific, uh, yeah, project. So I feel like everything just connects. And this was, um, this is my last project that I can show you. Yes, this is my last one. Um, yeah, okay, so I just wanted to end my slide with uh, my learnings. Um, these are some points. So keep practicing your art. Self-initiate projects if you don't find opportunities. Um, tell everyone what you want to do. Research, apply to open calls. Expose yourself to social media, shows, exhibitions, etc. cetera. Um, do other works to make the ends meet and don't give up um, because it's a long journey, uh, but it's worth it if you love it. Okay, so that's it. Thanks for listening. <laughs> Yay, I love this. It's so unapologetic what you do. And I love that um, you presented with your installations and lighting work. And then it moved on to, you know, like doodling back from the roots, applying calls, meeting people, and then to, to murals. The, the way that you've explored so, so many mediums can describe and encompass so much of what we do. Um, this applies to being a musician, to an engineer, to a visual artist, to a painter, being unapologetic. And um, it's, it's fine to feel intimidated. It's fine to feel small or, or daunting. This is what drives everyone in this field. And you've provided so many fantastic tips. Philippa, soon Kyla 
and know that there are tools and resources out there. All you have to do is ask Google and social media, especially on Instagram. If you find an artist you really like, it doesn't hurt to maybe DM them or find their emails on the website and just message them because we're all in this pool together and sometimes collaborations will blossom that way. Um, I completely agree with this. The, the mentorship program really leads to more opportunities. Um, and I'm just looking through the chat right now. I'm going back to um, Ali. Ali Ren Renner, I'm sorry for pronouncing your last name wrong. You said you were just wondering if um, you can skip back to the process slides in Kyla's presentation to cover that bit more at the end. Um, we could definitely do that. Please, by all means, um, share your screen, unmute yourself, and we can have a discussion. We have 30 minutes, that's it. And then it's it's the cutoff time. So now is your, your opportunity to, to ask questions. So I'm going to... Um, let Kyla share her screen again and answer um, Ali's question. <clears throat> Hopefully she's still in this chat. Perfect. Yeah, sorry for skipping. I just, uh, as a first person, I was like, I wouldn't, I don't want to take up all the time. So I'm glad that we had some time at the end. Um, <laughs> So that's great. Um, so yeah, I definitely want to chat through this more. Um, so this is really a, um, a process about when we're hired. So when someone hires RC Batelle, like a developer um, or building owner or the city or whoever it may be, who the client who hires us, us um, this is kind of the process we go through with them. Um, so all from like the engagement of the community, of the site, and really understanding the site and the community a lot better before we proceed. Um, and then canvas selection and curation. So like Philippa and Sin, and we all have said, like everything is a canvas. So it, it can be it really interesting to try to select a canvas from a public site when there, there's so many to choose from. Um, so really just understanding the impact and you know the timelines and all these things to to choose the the canvas um correctly um for for the opportunity um artist selection and contracting so um open calls uh, like um philippa mentioned as well um then there's uh direct commissions uh depending on the project um so there's many different ways that that we um can go about artist selection um, Artscape, uh, definitely follow along Artscape, um, social media, um, sign up for the newsletter. Um, if there is an open call, it will come out that way. Um, and just like Soon mentioned, like for her process, um, we were starting the mentorship component really when we we're starting the um, project with Studio of Minus, because um, it was a larger scale process, a uh, project. Um, so we definitely wanted to have uh, mentorship involved in, in that because it was a great learning opportunity for, for emerging artists. Um, and if she hadn't have reached out to Lakeview, so she actually reached out to the Lakeview team directly, who um, are the clients. Um, if she hadn't done that, we wouldn't have known, you know, that she was interested, that she was local and all these connections um, that she made um, in her email. Um, and thankfully, you know, I got that email, I got it sent to me from the Lakeview team and I, I got in touch with her, but it just shows, you know, you never know till you ask and we, it just was the right moment and the right question. And it was just, um, really great to see how, how that can work out. So always reach out. I'm always an, an email away. I'll, I'll put all my email and all my information, um, in the chat after this as well. Um, and then moving on, art, art production. So we're basically a facilitator. So we facilitate between the client and the artist. And we create this bridge where there's a language in between that sometimes can get, uh, can be a little bit tricky. Um, and the art world can be quite different from the business world. So having someone in between um, my background, which I didn't really go into. Um, so I'm an interior architect um, back in my hometown of Edinburgh, Scotland. And I'm also an artist. And so having this understanding of two worlds with both environment and um, the art world has really helped me navigate this facilitation um, and, and I think can become quite helpful um, for artists as well um, and developers who may not uh, think of the art world that much. 
um, art production management. Oh, I just went into that storytelling and documentation. You can't forget to tell the story. You can't forget to share um, what what's been you know achieved and and the impact that uh, mentorship uh, poses to people. Um, if we hadn't kept sharing that message, uh, maybe others might not have added a mentorship component to to their um, their projects too. So just keeping spreading the word and coming to places like this and and spreading why we do what we do and the impact it can have and hearing Sin's amazing story of how it impacted her too. It's it's just really um it's really fulfilling and then hopefully uh, it's inspiring to everybody. Okay, I'm going to stop sharing again. So let me know if you want me to. Definitely. There it is. Thank you. And I think it's it's absolutely correct about um, if you have an idea, if you have something to share, don't be afraid and like send us send us an email. Even even if we don't reply, we don't have an answer. Just just know that we have you on file kind of thing it's like a roster I think it was just two days ago I, I messaged Kyla I said Kyla um there's this amazing artist curator um, um, Imani and unfortunately Matt can't do anything on our end on our end but I was able to connect Imani to Kyla and that's how the conversation really beckons and and start it has to start somewhere um, I think I will share my screen very, very quickly. Please keep the questions coming. Um, let me see. I'm just going to pull this up really quickly. Um, so, okay, here it is. So on our Mississauga Arts Council webpage, um, if you go to programs and murals with Mac, um, Underneath, they are upcoming calls. Um, so put this in your calendar right now, those of you who want to apply for the first public arts project on a smaller scale. This is like the fun, this is a great, fantastic opportunity to start somewhere, you know, quite smaller, and then you can put that in your CV. This will always be in your pocket, and then you can move on from, from there. So March 20th is the, the day that we're going to upload um, all these calls, so bear that in mind. Um, there will be uh, mentorship programs attached to this, so if you have any questions, by all means, like email me. So there are three up-and-coming boxes. Um, this is a great first opportunity to those that want to get involved in public arts at a smaller scale and then, you know, grow from there. We have many more um, coming, and I know on this call right now, we have so many artists i'm going to um put um yellen's high <laughs> um at, at the little pin so if you if you google um her yellen's high she has a blog and she talks about her um steps and her experiences um through murals and it's something to really read about it's very educational it's very knowledgeable um, so please do, uh, feel free to share your Instagram here. Um, I think it's a great way to start connecting with, with, with one another. And so that's, that's that we still have half an hour, but if we don't have any more questions, um, we can always, um, end this call. So we have ones from Lynn St. Philippa. Can you talk a bit about Neighbors by John Sasaki? Love the project and would like to learn more about the process of creating small sculptures for public art. Sure, absolutely. Um, so I don't have any pictures of it right now. I can try and pull some up. Um, basically along Mavis Road uh, in kind of North Mississauga, um, there is uh, this bridge uh, that crosses uh, Fletcher's Creek um, and Fletcher's Creek uh, is a small kind of water um, area uh, that has, you know, nice, a nice kind of trail system all through it. Um, there's community centers, there's schools um, that this bridge connects to, and then um, you kind of uh, as you're walking along uh, Mavis Road, I'm sure all of you in Mississauga know it's, you know, the complete opposite of that is like heavy traffic, 
six lanes, cars are speeding, it's crazy. Um, and basically, uh, this project came about through um, uh, a facilities uh, project that was being done on the bridge to widen the bridge. Um, to add, uh, I think, wider sidewalks, um, a cycling lane, that kind of thing. And as part of that, they had budget set aside for public art on the bridge. Um, so John um, Sasaki was the selected artist for that project. Um, and what he proposed was this project called Neighbors, which was a series of um, uh, very lifelike, but a little bit larger than life um, sculptures, bronze sculptures of animals that he himself has kind of seen in um, walking around Fletcher's Creek. Um, and these animals are peeking over the edge of the bridge onto the road, kind of merging, um, you know, the nature and the life below the bridge with those um, uh, folks walking on the bridge. And really the project, oh yes, perfect, thank you. Um, the project is, it's very small, it's very subtle. You know, if you're driving in a car and you're driving fast on Mavis Road, you're not gonna see it. Um, it's really designed for pedestrians and for people walking and as a project that you kind of stumble upon as you're walking past. Um, so yeah, there's uh, different animals. There's a little snake, frog, rabbit. Um, there's a, a, a coyote puppy. Um, there's a turtle, there's uh, a beaver, and um, yeah, this mouse. Uh, it's so cute. I definitely uh, encourage everyone to check it out. Um, this is one of my favorite projects. It's just so kind of unassuming, um, but has such a big impact, um, especially on the pedestrian and, and folks walking. It just kind of adds that bit of magic into the city. Um, and it was a really interesting fabrication process. So John, um, Tossed every molded everything um, in uh, clay in his studio, and then he worked with a fabricator to do kind of like a lost cost method. Um, so you know he spent months um, working in his studio, uh, building. He built. Um, uh, exact replicas of those ends of the bridge so that he could get the exact kind of with the the um the rebar even through the um structures that he built that was the same as what was in the bridge so that he could perfectly position them have them the exact right size have them kind of angled so that they would be poking up just uh, just enough over the edge of the bridge um and uh yeah it was a really really amazing amazing project That's so cute. It's like a little chipmunk. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was so cute. And I can post a link to um, uh, the project on um, Coda Works, which is a really great public art website that has, um, it's a really great resource if you're looking to get an idea of like project budgets, especially because most people list the, um, the budget of their project. So you can get a sense of like what is available within a particular budget range. Um, and on that page, there's um, it lists out the fabricator um, and um, I think even the installers as well. So you can it's really good to kind of build your your own network of fabricators and installers. They'll help you a lot, um, you know, especially, um, you know, folks that are are interested in public art and are um, willing to kind of help you and guide you as an emerging artist in the field. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll post. Mm -hmm. going through Ooh, questions are coming in <laughs> yay um carlene asked what kind of side jobs would you do on the side in between projects soon um all kinds <laughs> so i was teaching art um part-time um, I also had a full time job at a fashion company as a graphic artist. Um, so it was basically creating art uh, with Illustrator. Um, and uh, what else? I've worked at restaurants, cafes um, in the beginning um, and freelance projects. Um, yeah. So, yeah, even like I worked at a testing center, um, administer stuff 
uh, yeah. So just anything that you could find, uh, if it's art related, if it's going to help you, um, like uh, using design programs, for example, um, that's a plus. Um, and teaching also uh, is great because you're sharing your knowledge to different art students. Um, so you're also learning as you're teaching. Um, and I think just having those jobs also uh, kind of open up like different opportunities as well. Um, so I highly recommend just, just trying out different things. Um, what else? Lovely. Mm. We have Diana. Diana asks, wondering again, how Zoom connected with the lecture program? Was that something you approached lecture with or mm. you saw a call for it? Same with your oh, work. Yeah. So for, first of all, the Lake, uh, Lakeview Village, um, there was no call for it, no opportunities. I didn't have any idea. Um, I just had a desire to create something large scale at the time. And I was researching on the website and everything and approached different people, but no reply. But uh, I was passing by, I was driving uh, by my Lakeview Village. <laughs> um, yeah, and then I was like, oh, what is this? And there were some murals and stuff. So I just went on, I just Googled their website and just not like, I was like, oh, okay, my name is soon. I'm an artist, blah, blah, blah. I'm interested in um, creating something for you. like sculpture or whatever like I had no knowledge but I'm just like this is who I am <laughs> and uh, <laughs> they pretty much I think forwarded my email to Kyla uh, from Artscape and Kyla uh, had an opportunity so <laughs> that was that and the Brookfield place um, yeah that was I got so I got really lucky because I think because of the timing and also I kept just approaching different places um, the Brookfield place um I got referred uh from I mean not referred from okay let me put this <laughs> uh so I was doing a mentorship program with Studio F minus um by S by Artscape and Studio F minus team works with many clients um and uh, one of their clients basically needed something for uh like a bold artwork and they thought of me so they're like oh I knew I knew an artist, so uh, they approached me. So yeah, you you just never know. Um, is there anything else? I think that one is for Kyla. Also, mm -hmm. is the Artscape mentorship program something that an artist has to set up? For example, find the mentor themselves, or does Artscape help pair the artist with the mentor? Yeah, great question. Um, yeah, so uh, the mentorship program, so we already have a lead artist basically on, on the project. Um, so Studio F minus is the, the lead artist and uh, they're not themselves from uh, Mississauga. And so we definitely wanted to make sure there, there were artists, um, local artists getting opportunities um, and so in some capacity. And so mentorship really became um, a great way to do that um, because the lead artists were, were not connected. Um, and so that that's why the mentorship program even started there. And so soon uh, had reached out even before that, that came to fruition. So it's just great timing. Um, and so, yeah, we had the lead artists uh, ready, the mentors. And then from there, um, the mentees were selected um, through a jury process um, with the lead artists as uh, part of that process because um, they would be the mentors. Um, and so it was really great. It, it meant that um, they could be part of that process as well since they were doing the mentorship and, and mentoring the artists. Um, so it is great for them to also be part of part of that process. Um, so yeah, so you don't need to find a mentor yourself or anything like that. You can just let us know that you're interested um, in what you're interested in and that uh, we're interested in learning and, and we can always uh, keep that top of mind for, for any future projects. Um, Carlene asks, is there a call out for this mentorship program? Oh, um, not at the moment. So the mentorship program, um, it, it depends project by project what we have. Um, so basically, um, our Batelli will just get 
um, basically hired by different developers or the city or a different client each time. Um, and when there's a project that presents itself, we're, we're able to create a program, uh, usually with mentorship, especially with larger scale uh, projects. Uh, we'll have mentorship components within the program, and then we'll be able to put out um, calls and things like that. So there's not currently one. I have uh, about 12 different projects on the go right now in different um, in different uh, stages, um, but not a brand new one. So when there's a brand new project on the go, and if it has a mentorship component, we'll make sure that the call goes out for that. Mm -hmm. I think it's also very important to um, tweak your CVs and portfolio to specific calls. So I feel like sometimes you could even, you know, add them in as a maybe second thought, like, by the way, you know, I can be a mentor <laughs> in some cases because you, you just, you just never, you never know. Um, and um, yeah, are there any more questions, comments? Hi, can I ask some more questions again? Hi, yeah. I'm Diana. Um, back to that question about um, the mentorship, like just to clarify. So like, for example, was Studio F minus your client for Artscape or like they reached out to you and then like they had a, this like project in mind that they wanted to like beautify like their space and then soon was an intern there or like whoever's an intern there they they join in as part of whatever project that um i'm a little confused <laughs> sorry no no worries no worries at all um so lakey village uh lakey village are the client they're a developer um so they have a massive um space basically site that they're developing right now into many residential units um, and so they're the client and they came to us and we run a, a public art program for them, Artscape Atelier. Um, and we actually, um, not to toot our own horn, but we won an award for it um, in 2021. So it's great to see that, you know, people are appreciating um, the program because there's so many different art pieces that kind of encompassed into the program anyway um, all that to say um so we're the public art manager and so uh, we create all these different opportunities on the site um and late for our client and studio f minus was one of the lead artists that we had contracted for this project um so they went through like a selection process um and there was like five uh, artists who were all um like sculpture artists who had previous experiences um in in the field with large-scale sculptures who applied um and then from there they were selected as lead artists and then from there because they were not um connected to mississauga themselves uh we decided we needed to add this mentorship component a because it's a large-scale project so it'd be a really good learning opportunity um but b because there was no um mississauga artists like on this on this large-scale project um, so that's why that kind of came about. So the mentorship component was born. And thankfully, Sin was had already emailed about wanting to be involved somehow. And it just it just was a, a fantastic timing opportunity there. I'll, I'll also add that um, the city is uh, inspired by this project. We're running um, another mentorship project as well uh, at a new park that's being developed in downtown Mississauga. Um, so we had a call for artists for the um, the main lead artist back in um, the fall, and then we're expecting kind of spring summer um, that that artist uh, there was I think five artists that were shortlisted. So we'll have an artist selected by the summer, um, and part of their uh, kind of next stage of their proposal is putting together a uh, mentorship plan. Um, so once they're selected, we'll be working with them to uh, build out their mentorship plan and then um, likely doing a call for artists for mentees for that project as well. So um, very kind of like similar model as the Studio F minus project. Um, so keep an eye out for that. Uh, the, I don't have exact timelines yet. It depends on depends on um, who gets selected and kind of what their um, mentorship plan is, um, but likely uh, in the summer. Um, I also want to add something <laughs> along with uh, Philippa. Uh, so basically, I think also you what you could do is um, 
just email either Philippa or uh, Kyla or Jacqueline, um, put together your portfolio. Um, website is a great way to show um, your curated works and your experience. Um, and like maybe just ask like, oh, I could, I would love to be an assistant to one of the bigger projects. And um, it, when the time comes, um, you, you might be contacted and that could be like a great like starting point to getting into like this public art project. Um, I was also helping out um, the one of the big project uh, with Moonlight Collective on uh, the cycling mural. I uh, helped them out like with painting because it was a huge surface. That <laughs> so, was you. I yeah, was that was you work. Yeah, 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 yeah. I helped out. Uh, <laughs> was it like last summer? Um, forgot, but yeah, I helped out. Um, and uh, yeah, I connected with them, and also you know they could also give you a lot of good uh, tips, uh, stories, and you know all that. So highly recommend like you know approaching all of us <laughs> um, for different opportunities. Yeah, and, and often when we have um, you know a call for artists, say for the banner program and um you know we get such high quality submissions and you know only one artist can be selected um but we do keep um track of everyone who applies and um keep kind of keep them on files so that if a project comes up where we're doing a direct commission or um an invitational call you know we do have um we often go back and, and reach out to someone who's already applied for something so um you know if you're if you're wondering about whether you should apply for something uh definitely encourage you to always do it Oh, oh, and and also you get rejected a bunch of times. Um, I mean, it's just very, uh, it's very natural, like normal uh, for because just you know you're just uh, one artist, one style. But there's tons of different uh, opportunities and different like um, yeah. So it's timing and like also like whether it's your fit for the project. It's not because you're bad or you know you're not uh, worth it or anything. Uh, mm -hmm. So just be ready to be rejected like many, many times. Even like working with Studio F minus, they also mention they're like very experienced like artists uh, in public art sector. They get rejected all the time. Um, they only have like a few uh, that they, that they ma make um, per year, but they are very big projects. So they keep doing it. Um, but yeah, it's part of the process. Definitely. I'll also add, um, I I always encourage people if you do get rejected, follow up and ask for feedback and and try and hear what you know what the jury had to say about your proposal. Um, even if you don't want to hear it, you know it can be uh, really helpful. And um, you know, not that many people. I mean, knock on wood. I don't want to be too busy, but not that many people ask me for feedback. Uh, but I'm always like willing to give it. So um, I def yeah definitely encourage folks to to follow up when you do get rejected. Definitely. Wow, so it's 820 right now. Um, we've got some fantastic questions. Oh, 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 hold on. There's there's more. Um, uh, okay. Who do we ask for each program for feedback? Oh, that's a good question. So usually on the, the application process, there'll be um there'll be a contact person there, or if you're applying, um, depending on kind of the software that is used, you'll either be applying, to, you know, to an email address or um to to a software program but there usually be some type of contact available if you need assistance mm -hmm. a place to look mm -hmm. um carly says just a comment i did get a little fatigue applying after a while yes mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it happens but but keep going um because you can always learn and it doesn't hurt to say oh can you provide some feedback um why did I not, you know, get it this time? And then someone on the other one will, will always be more than happy to start a positive conversation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think too, it's good to look for um, calls to artists that are not necessarily all um, asking you for a new proposal or, or a concept, like some uh, pretty, like maybe 75% of our calls for artists are for expressions of interest, which is really more just a, a written concept or a video kind of concept. And then 
it's a two-stage process. If you get selected and shortlisted, then you'll get um, kind of moved on to a, a shorter pool and then you'll be expected to develop out your, your concept. So mixing it up to, to make sure you have kind of different, you know, you're not putting so much work into all of these proposals that are, are unpaid opportunities as well, right? Because it is, it's work to do these proposals for sure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And also highly recommend self-initiating some projects because um, that's a, another experience. And if you cannot find opportunities like right at that moment, um, I think if you self-initiate and really show, show everyone like what you could do and like apply to like, maybe Photoshop it, whatever, like apply to certain things that you, you have in your head, um, uh, then that's a great way to build up your portfolio. You, know, you just never know. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, just one quick thing too, if you see any like free events or networking things, like our state holds a lot of uh, uh, free events. Uh, we have a residency right now in Mississauga at Lakeview Village. If if you did want to see um, Lakeview Village, it's it's a great opportunity. I can quickly find a link to it. Um, but yeah, feel free to like come to these kind of free events and able to network with other artists and other community members. And just like soon, you never know what comes from that, um, from those conversations, rather than just a you know, another email or another submission, like actually meeting a person face to face can really open doors to um, and start really interesting conversations. So if you can ever get out to any um, of those, um, those events, feel, feel, feel free to do that too. Um, and I always offer intro chats instead of just a simple email, you can say, hey, can we jump on a call or a chat? Um, and it's just nice to chat through like what you're looking for um, uh, for opportunities too. So always happy to do that. Um, oh, I found the link, so I'll just quickly put it down here. Okay, perfect. Um, but yeah, again, there's a lot of events um, and free free things around that are really interesting and you get to meet a lot of artists at um, as well. So I have to always meet up and, and chat. Definitely. So unfortunately, we are out of time. I would like to thank Kyla, Pip, and Soon for joining me tonight on this public art panel. We hope that you all learned lots about the world of public art, and we'll be excited to dive into calls and projects this summer. Um, TD Culture Lab continues next week. So join us on March 14th at 7 p.m. to learn about podcasting from Kevi O. Learn more by visiting MrSagArtsCouncil.com or clicking on the TD Culture Lab and Programs menu. You can also view previous webinars, our Mac YouTube channel. Like I said, this is recorded, so make sure you check your email because you will find the recording very soon. And make sure to follow the city, Artscape, and soon. So a quick Google search will help you get there. So that's it. Thank you so much, everyone. Yay, thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. And have a wonderful night. Bye.